everybody and welcome back to my channel. So today's video, I'm going to show you how to applique on a shirt. Now I've seen a lot of cute shirts online and on Instagram, on Facebook, people selling these shirts. I just wanted to show you how easy it is to do this on your own. You're going to need a printout of, of the picture you want to applique. I suggest something really simple so that it won't be so hard to do and cut out. So that's what I have here. I will show these in a second. And then also I have these fabrics that I picked up at Joann's. I'm going to be doing a fall kind of Halloween shirt. So these are the ones I picked out and I picked, I got half a yard. So half a yard should be more than enough to make a couple of shirts, I believe. So I got this cute pumpkin, um, pumpkin plaid background fabric. I thought that was really cute. And then I got this Halloween fabric. And I got just a simple polka dot and orange background. Another important supply you will need is this heat and bond. I will have it, all of the supplies linked in my description down below, but um, you need this to, to um, adhere it to your shirt. So this is the kind I use. I use heat and bond and you can find this at Joann's as well. And for this applique, I'm going to be putting my applique on a shirt. You can put this on a pillow, which would be super cute um, on a per, on a bag, like a, a fabric bag that you have. But I'm going to do it on a shirt. So I have two shirts here. And these shirts, I got them at Walmart for like $3.88. Super cheap. These are the men's. I get it from the men's section. And it's the Fruit of the Loom uh, brand. And I do recommend that you wash your shirts first because if there is any shrinking, it's better to have it shrink before you put the applique on your garment. So now let's get started with this tutorial. My design, my idea for my shirt is to be a Halloween or a fall shirt. I think I'm gonna do a Halloween and a fall shirt. So I found these images. This one's a jack-o'-lantern and I thought it would be really easy to cut out and put on my shirt. And then this is just a plain, um pumpkin and you can do cut each of these individually and do different fabrics on each little pumpkin line and that would look super cute um if you want something really really simple um just just a plain old cut out pumpkin this is another one and um that you can use and it has the numbers so you know what fabric goes on which and this is another jack-o'-lantern I found that's really simple. So online, you can find so many free printouts that you can just use for your shirt. So I'm going to do my Halloween one first, and I'm going to be using this image. So I'm going to put these to the side and get started on this. So to do, for the first step, you're going to need your printable, and you're going to need your heat and bond. Now, let me move this out of the way. Your heat and bond has two sides. One of the sides is really smooth and like parchment paper filling. And then this side is, um, you can feel bumps on it and that's, you can feel the glue and that's that adhesive on this side. So we're gonna be working on the parchment paper side first. You're gonna open your, your paper up and you're gonna cut out your design. For the jack-o'-lantern, I'm gonna cut out the pumpkin and cut out the triangles and the smile out, and then I'll show you what's the next step. So for to get these triangles out, I'm just gonna kind of fold it in half and snip it in the middle so that my scissors can go through and cut out the triangle. my pumpkin cut out and ready to be traced onto my heat and bond now I'm going to be tr um, tracing on the smooth surface remember the bumpy surface is facing down on my mat and I'm going to be tracing on the smooth surface now I just wanted to quickly note that you have to trace everything mirror imaged because when you put it onto your shirt it will be flipped the wrong way if you don't so since this is the right side, this is the way I want my pumpkin to be on my shirt, I need to trace it facing mirror imaged, so backwards. So this is how I'm gonna be tracing it. I'm gonna take my pencil and I'm just gonna outline my pumpkin. So 
I finished tracing my pumpkin and it's ready to go and I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm just gonna cut around it leaving an edge so that I have room to work with when I glue it onto my fabric so we're gonna cut around it it doesn't have to, don't don't cut on the lines yet so we're gonna cut around it Okay, so my, I have my pumpkin cut out and you see I have left it an edge and this is the smooth side and this is the rough side. So I'm just going to be saying that throughout the video just to re, just to put that out there. I just don't want anybody to be tracing on the wrong side. So remember, you trace on the smooth side and the rough side is untouched, right? So I cut it out with a little edge. Now I'm going to do the fun part. We're going to pick out which fabric we want to use. And I'm going to be using this gray shirt, so I'm going to be putting the fabric against it and see which one I really like. Fabric I'm going to pick to do my jack-o'-lantern. It is a, I know it's picking up a different color on camera, but it's a light, it's a purple and an orange background. So now you're going to put your fabric, open your fabric, my fabric, and I'm putting the fabric pretty side facing down. And I'm going to be gluing, ironing on my um, pumpkin cut out on the wrong side of the fabric so the pretty side facing down and the wrong side facing up and I'm going to be um, ironing this on to this side of my fabric so I'm going to head over to the ironing board and we're going to iron this down so that it's stuck on my fabric at the ironing board we're going to be ironing our heat and bond to our first fabric so um, the instructions for this heat and bond say to use a medium heat dry heat so no steam so if you get a different brand or you get something else make sure to read the instructions and it will let you know what kind of heat setting or if you need to use steam or no steam so i have my iron ready and i'm going to put my iron straight onto my image and remember leave room around your pumpkin to be able to cut i'm going to place this over it and i'm just going to smooth it out So my heat and bond is nice and stuck on here and I'm gonna let it cool down and then we're gonna get to cutting so now I'm gonna take my fabric scissors and cut around my pattern my cut around my picture that I just ironed and I'm gonna put the extra fabric to the side now you're gonna cut along the lines and remember to cut, if you have a jack-o'-lantern shape, cut inside, just like I showed you on the paper, folding it in half and snipping it in the middle. Now that my pumpkin is all cut out and ready to be ironed onto my shirt, I need to remove this, um, this backing so this the smooth side is now your back and the front is your pattern side so what I like to you do is use a pin and I just kind of mark it like this onto my I draw I kind of not put I don't push too hard but I just drag my pin um on the back of my paper and I peel it off so here we're gonna peel off the backing going to place it on our shirt we took the backing off and I'm going to place it where I want it on my shirt be careful at this point you don't want to put it in the wrong spot because once you hit it with the iron it's it's going to stick onto the shirt so there's no turning back so make sure you look at your shirt and um, put it exactly where you want to put it where you want it placed so now I'm going to take my iron and run it over my piece So it's adhered to my shirt and I love the way this jack-o'-lantern turned out. I think it looks super cute. Now you can be done right here. You can wear it and it should be good for a couple of washes. Um, after a couple of washes, it might fray and, and it might 
start peeling up. So I like to sew around it to really secure it to my shirt or a pillow or whatever you're sewing on your applique to. So I'm gonna take it to my sewing machine and I'm gonna walk you through how I stitch it onto my Here shirt. Here I am at my sewing machine and I have put purple thread because it, I feel like it'll match the purple on my jack-o'-lantern. So coordinate your thread according to whatever fabric you have. So I'm gonna be doing purple and I'm gonna be using, you can use a zigzag stitch, you can use a straight stitch, and you can use what's called a satin stitch. I'm gonna be doing a satin stitch because that's just my favorite stitch for appliqueing. But again, you can, if you have just a straight stitch machine, it, this will work perfectly with that. And after a few washes with the straight stitch, it will fray. But um, that's also a cute look too, um, just the edges fraying, but with the straight stitch, I think that's super cute. So to do your stitch, Remember you want to open your shirt up because you don't want to stitch the shirt closed because then you can't wear it So remember to open your shirt up So pick anywhere you want to start. I'm going to start on this side You want to line you're gonna put your preps or foot down and you my machine has a little red line right here and um, I like to keep the that red line going with my edge of my applique. So here I am, I'm gonna start, remember we're gonna go forward and back. This is gonna be, I mean, I feel like this is level like two or three in sewing. Um, the straight stitch would be easy for a beginner, but if you're doing the satin or the zigzag, I feel like as well, you need to go really slow if this is your first time um, so that you can get that clean embroidered look. Do not rush yourself, just go nice and slow. And remember, do not push the fabric into the machine. The machine has little teeth under it and it's pulling the fabric um, through. And you're just um, guiding your fabric into your sh into the sewing machine so don't let the sewing machine control you you control the sewing machine so um guide your shirt the way you want it and slow down don't go so fast so here i'm going to start We're at the end and we're gonna make sure we um, we finish our stitch. So we're gonna go forward and back. I'm just gonna click my extra threads. Okay, and I'm gonna hit it with the iron. It does get warped a little bit just from the sewing, but once you, you iron it flat, it won't be warped. everybody this is the finished look I have it here on for you guys I think it turned out super cute I wore it to go pick up my kids today and a lot of people asked me where I bought it and I was so happy to say that I made it so if you give it a try this tutorial try please tag me on Instagram so I can see your creations and like always if you have any questions about the tutorial or the supplies I use comment down below or message me and I'll get back to you as soon as I can all right guys I'll see you in the next video. Bye.